beautiful soul family and welcome to Patreon Miracles Beneath the Surface. And today is we're going to be reading from Psalms chapter 136. So if you have your Bible, um, that would be great to utilize it. Um, and this, this is about God's love. So um, as I was in the midst of prayer, Now it's the mid part of the day practically, but it's about not only, it's, it's about edging out time, you know, um, edging out time to say, God, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your everlasting love. And this video is about gleaning, um, gleaning wisdom from the Bible. All right, we're reading Psalms chapter 136, verses 1 to 9. But it's also about taking the time to meditate on God's love. <laughs> and uh, it's just so interesting because God is the Alpha and the Omega, God is the first and the last. God is the creator of heaven and earth and animate and inanimate. When I was younger, I had wrote a nice little poem about God and um, and I, I turned it in and it's in a book called Amuse to Follow. And one day I will, I will read that poem. And, but it was about God's love and so, you know, there's so, we spend so much time having the world and its, and its um, toxicities pop up in our face. But we can carve time away from the world and we can, you know, just, all I did was I came into my room and I sat on the floor and just meditated on God and prayed. It's just about taking time and saying, God, I appreciate you. You know, it's, it's like God has given us so much already. Given us the air to breathe. Given us life. And speaking of which, you know, God created us, right? God faced us, formed us, and blew breath into us. That's very intimate. You know, that's like, a, um, that's likened to, to come to an understanding is um, a person who is in their purpose and they are, they are infusing their energy into it so much and they're putting their love into it. And it's just, it, it, it's, it's beautiful. It's momentous. It's. It's a moment, a sacred moment, a special moment that God formed us. And God's love hasn't changed for us. In this world, there is a wicked system. Satan is the ruler, this is the bottom line. And what God was showing me is that there's a baby in the middle. God's on one side, Satan's on the other side. And, you know, there's so much that Satan hates God, okay? And, and, and really has a detest for us. But how can Satan really get to God? It's through us. And so... There's so much schemes, so much sorcery, so much crap, so much lower base toxicity that is being thrown at the baby, causing the baby to cry. But the thing about it is, is that we must be awakened as to who is causing the agony. Sadly enough, the world would have you be asleep and will have you think that God is, is wicked, and God is just a judge, and there's no way to please God, you know, so why even bother? But that is so far from the truth. You see, Satan, 
father of lies. Steals, kills, and destroys. The total opposite. God tells the truth. God created life. Imagine God created life. God created the earth. And all of this is but an illusion. No. But the world. Satan created the world to mimic. So one is everlasting and one's an illusion. One is uh, infinite and one has an expiration date. We see, especially in the Bible, there's surface, but then there's different levels. It grows with us. It's like that jacket, the clothing that grows with us. It grows with us based on our maturity. It helps us. It's like it's like we are able to look at it and it reflects to us. What is it that we're looking at? Are we exemplifying the excellencies and the image of God when we're looking here? What do we see? What do we need to change? What do we need to work on? What do we need to improve for the longevity, for the tomorrow? Talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Talks about God's love. And so the thing about it is, is that who do we cry out to? Do we cry out to the one that tries to mimic God but is not God and putting forth so much problems in um, that is hidden in our life? And yet do we cry out to, to that or do we cry out to God? When we cry out to God, that really makes God's heart feel so good. You are my people and I am your God. I am your father. And as I'm in the midst of, it, of prayer, I used to say, you're my heavenly father, but the realness of it is that there is no separation. You are my father. You are our father. And you created us with love and kindness. And the world will have you be numb to such love. But glory to God when we go within and we just meditate on God. Meditate on the air that we breathe. Meditate upon our life. And where did we get it from? We got it from God. Always it's about it's about Improving is about raising consciousness. God gave us His only begotten Son, manifest in the flesh, went through the process by which we went through, birthing, grown into the womb, gestation, and being birthed into the earth, and yes, into this world, going through different developmental stages, feeling, loving, mourning, crying, going through so many things. It's just teaching, inspiring others, being judged, all these different things. It's a struggle. But Jesus endured. And God's love, eternal love, this is not just any one of the mill love. This is eternal, infinite love. Hallelujah. And when, we, when we're able to just fine tune that, that is healing within itself. God, thank you for your love that you have for me. I don't have to wait to go to church on Saturday or Sunday or Wednesday. You are here with me. Thank you for your covering. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your endurance. Situations may not change, but glory to God. You are with me. I am not alone. God's love endures. But God's love is still there. And really, this is not about a love from another person. As you're going within with self-love, self-care, self-nurture, and you, you're disconnecting, you're pulling up that, as brought out in another video on Check Out My YouTube, um, pulling up that loose end to where there's no connection back to the world, no connection back to karmic people, you know? And you go and you build your connection and you plug into God Almighty. You're plugging into the outlet. It's letting you out of the connections of the world. And you're plugging into the power of God. You're plugging into love. And you don't have to take that cord out. 
my son, he, he would go around and he'll make sure all the plugs are out because as the plugs are still in, it's still activity going on. And that little by little, it's um, in, adding onto the bell. But see, the wonderful thing about it is when we stay plugged into God Almighty during the good times and the bad times and just in between, God, thank you. God, I love you. It will bring you to tears. It will bring you to tears. And this is, you go into the room, you close the door. There are some people who have a problem doing that. But you go into the room, go into the bathroom, you close the door, and you pray. It doesn't have to be a prayer that is out loud. But you pray. What's so marvelous is God hears us. God hears us. Because God is present. The lies, the lies from the world is such is of such foolishness. Where we would think that God is not with us, that we have to travel so far to be able to maybe feel the Holy Spirit. But God is with us right now. And when we take time just not to ask for anything, I mean, it may come, right? But in the beginning part, seek first the kingdom of God. Prioritizing God Almighty, I love you. And I see your love. I see your peace that is in my life. I see your presence that is in my life. Thank you for providing me my food for my soul and for my body. Thank you for our shelter. Thank you for so much. Thank you. And, and no one can take that away from you. Uh, what I was the word that came out when I was doing this video the first time was um, it's an intimacy spiritual intimacy spiritual communion and it's about not being numb the, the world taught us to hate ourselves subliminally but God doesn't need that God is straight, point blank. <laughs> God teaches. World taught, but God teaches. And God is present always in our life. So now let's, let's go into Psalms um, 136, verses 1 to, 1 to 9. It reads, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let's do a sidebar. His mercy endures. When I think about endures, it's gone through so much lies. It's gone through so much of being hidden. It's gone through so much of being robbed. It's gone through so much. But God's love endureth forever. Verse 2 says, God, oh God. Oh, give thanks unto God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. So here we have his mercy endures forever, his love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Look, his mercy endureth forever. Again, here in verse 4, to him who... To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. Great wonders. Just his grace and his mercy, it says in the Bible, is sufficient enough. Hallelujah. How many times have we cried and cried to the world? And then when we look towards God as, why didn't God do this and why didn't God do that? It should be the other way around. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. 
to him that stretches out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever to him that made great lights for his mercy endureth forever the sun to rule by day for his mercy endureth forever the moon and stars to rule by night for his mercy endureth forever scriptures that i also want, would like to look into it's not only about the love of God for his children, but it's also kindness and mercy. And then we're going to read the rest because it goes all the way straight to 26, okay? So let's go to Psalm, um, Psalms, let's go to Psalms 100, verse 1. And it says, Make joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lads. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. You see what's so interesting is that we go into prayer, and we go into prayer mode being, I have done it too. <laughs> and, and, and there are times to do so. But not every time. We are should go, to go in joyful. Okay? It says, for the Lord is good. Not was good. Not just will be good. But the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. As brought out here in 36, His mercy endureth forever. You know, what's so interesting is that Satan is an accuser. Oh, Satan will, will throw things up in your face quicker than you can ever blink. But God, and, and, and that's not of mercy. God's mercy endures. God's love is everlasting and long-suffering and endures when you think about it. All of these things. God is the creator. As far as hear that we didn't create ourselves. Verse, verse 3. Know that ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us. And not we ourselves. Okay. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Let's go to 117. 117. Verse 1 and 2, and it says, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great towards us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Now also, as we go back, back to 100, it's about, let's bless the Lord. When we... See, what's so interesting is um, in church, they say the Lord loves a cheerful giver, right? But the thing is, is that we automatically equate that to money. And that is not the case. Not, you know, what is it that we offer unto God with cheerful giving? Here it says, Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Ooh, wee, beautiful soul family. That says a lot. I'll tell you why. Because there is importance in a name. In the past, um, you see, uh, one of Adam's purpose was to, by characteristic, was to name the animals. Okay? And... Um, there are people who were given names. God will tell the parents, name this child Noah or name this child um, Ishmael, name this child Isaac, you know, name this child John. And it was so important. Um, 
because there, uh, I believe in Zechariah, and there was some disbelief. And so, right on to when John the baptizer was born, he could not speak. And finally, when he was able to speak, he said his name is going to be John. And so, it's about blessings. There's blessings. And so here it says, be thankful unto, his, unto him and bless his name. Now, how can we, how can we bless God, God Almighty? But it's about understanding, God, you are my heavenly father. You're the creator of heaven and earth and all things. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. You are the God Almighty, God of armies. And in remembering who God is, I bless you. I take the time to bless you with my gladness, my, my appreciation, my love. That levels it up, right? Because we are going into prayer not to just be blessed, but we're taking the time to issue forth blessings to God. God, I bless your holy name. I love you. I appreciate you and thank you for your love. Okay? One thing that I did not, um, it's a sidebar, okay? And at times I, uh, there are certain things that light must bring to it. <laughs> and um, something that I find to be very interesting. Now this is a sidebar, okay? It's about what can we do, you know? There is this, this quote, it's not what our country can do for me. <laughs> it's about what can we do for our country. But let's just take out the word country and, and put in God. You see, when we go into prayer, it's always, please, can you, can you divine intervention, make a way where there is no way, bless us, thank you, God, hallelujah. And God is our heavenly father. God is our father, okay? But what can we do for God? Jesus said, love my sheep. If you love me, you love my sheep, right? Um, and as I was reading, let's go to Psalms 117. Let's go to Psalms 100. I'm going back to it now. Psalms 100 verse 4. And it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That's on the spiritual plane. It's like, don't come in these courts with lies. It's got to be spirit and truth. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> and be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Now, as you know, as you see, it's all about enduring God's faith, God's love, God's mercy, God's grace endures. God's love is long suffering on account of us. And where we're asking for justice, and this has helped me out a lot. It's like, Whoa, you know, we go into prayer to, to lovingly give offerings, cheerfully give gratitude, bless God's name. 
it's so interesting because we're bringing forth. It's not just about God get, bringing forth balance into our life. But it's about us bringing forth balance back to God. Not that God is not, is not in balance, but what can we do? It's about being spiritually proactive. How can we be spiritually proactive? <laughs> and it's about bringing forth justice for God. Meaning, telling the truth and shaming the devil. Where so much has been brought, so much lies has been brought to shame God. To, to prove that God is a liar. But God cannot lie. And God cannot break his promises. And it's about his children not only crying out to God Almighty, but saying, you know what? It doesn't matter what's going on in this world. I'm going to bless God's name. Thank you, Jehovah, Yahweh, Yehoah. Thank you for your only begotten son. Thank you for your everlasting love. It's like, it's about not only what God has is giving us, but also what God has given us and what God continues to give us. God's mercy is everlasting, endures. And as we're growing in our faith, as we're going in our trust and our love for God, it's about saying, God, in my life, I am bringing forth a balance of justice. Because as I was looking at my video, God was speaking to me saying justice. We are to bring forth rendering justice. God, I bring forth justice by, by, by fulfilling my purpose and blessing your holy name. And not only that, by sharing the truth, sharing the gospel. Because your truth endures forever. But lies expire. Bless your holy name and bring back trust and justice. It's not just so much about what God can do for us, but also what we can do for God. We can speak the truth and shame the devil. We can bless God's name. We can bring forth reverence, bring forth honor. That this is not something that is just done in the heavenly realm, but we are here as God's children. We bring forth the balance and bring, and we ourselves can bring forth justice. We can do it too. <laughs> utilizing the power, utilizing the strength, we bring forth justice and righteousness, shining the light of that of which is truth. Where a world will say that, will, will say that, you know, will go against divine, God's divine plan. <laughs> We can say, you know what? No. No. God created the heavens and the earth. Inanimate and animate. God created us. God formed us, faced us, loved us, blew life into us, blew the breath of life into us. We are not just mind and body. We are spiritual beings living this human experience. God is love. God is infinite. God is the author and the omega. The alpha and the omega, the author and the finisher. <laughs> it's about taking a stand and being ambassadors for God Almighty. And in that case, we're bringing forth justice. Because His mercy endures. His mercy endures so that one day we will, we will give back love. We will say, I bless you. Not just wanting to be blessed, but I stand on my feet. And I bless you. God, I bless you. And I share the testimony. My testimony is sharing not of just of what you've done in my life, but who you are. I speak the truth. I bring forth justice. You know, justice, when justice reigns, is about bringing forth truth. It's about bringing forth balance. And this is just a sidebar, but this is what we can do too. Praise God, honor God, giving forth offerings of love and blessing God. I bless you, God, because of all you deserve it. 
and I bring forth justice. I can bring forth justice by speaking the truth and shaming the devil. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Again, the endurance of God's mercy, grace, love, truth. You see, lies doesn't even go through the process of enduring. But God remembers his promises, and his truth endures. It goes through the test of time. It goes through the test of sorceries and, and rivalries and hatred. And still, you see, what I see about truth that endures, mercy and grace, kindness and love that endures, what I'm seeing is a warrior that endures for us. So that one day we can wake up and say, God, thank you so much. I am eternally grateful. When you're going into prayer and you're just spending time in prayer in reference to loving God, when you come out, you're totally renewed. You get further insight. God loves, God's love is long suffering. And endures for us. Let's go to um, Psalms one seventeen. First one and two. We read that, but it says, "Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations; praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness." is great towards us and the truth of the Lord endures forever praise ye the Lord as brought out earlier Satan is an accuser and paints the picture that God hates us and it's just so hard to please God but that's so far from the truth as brought out earlier God doesn't want for his children to die But there is a reverence. There is a love that he has for us. And so let's go back to 136, starting off on 110. Um, and 10. It says, To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever, and brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm. For his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts. For his mercy endureth forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it. For his mercy endureth forever. But, ever, but overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. For his mercy endureth forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness. For his mercy endureth forever. To him which smote great kings. For his mercy endureth forever. And the slew the famous kings. For his mercy endureth forever. Sihon king of the Amorites. For his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endureth forever. Even an heritage unto Israel his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembereth us, remembered us in our low estate, for his mercy endureth forever, and hath redeemed us from our enemies. His mercy endureth forever. Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. And you see, that's the thing. God's mercy endures forever. And 
Satan knows this. And so always tries to tempt and distract and disturb and steal, kill and destroy. And then accuses. Oh, I love them because they did this, this, and this. And when we humble ourselves and we, and we repent and we say, God, thank you for your love. I need your mercy. I need your grace. It's about having the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free from the burdens of the world where you can humble yourself and say, God, my heavenly father, I love you. I need you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace and your love and your kindness that endures forever. When I think about endures forever, is there a time where it stops? But with God, God loves us so much that it endures forever, if it need be. And so this is just a moment to give God love, to meditate on God, to, to separate the world, have a sacred space, have a sacred timing, sacred healing, just by meditating on God alone and being ever so moved to say, heartfully, sincerely, thank you. Have a beautiful and wonderful day. God bless.